Good afternoon or good morning. What's happening? Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, it was a little bit confusing to uh, set up the uh, chat this morning. I think I I think I'm using somebody else's uh, account. Um, thanks, Adam. Um, so there's a lot of people in here. I think this might be the uh, biggest. Uh, tiny chat chat room we've put together. It's a medium-sized chat. Um, thanks to Rolling Stone for uh, hosting us today. And I think we're gonna get. Um, I think we're gonna get Mike pretty soon. Is that right? Mike Einziger. Hello to Brazil. Hello to Russia. Hello to Ecuador. Hello to. Argentina. Hello to Malaysia, Germany, Canada, Egypt, Holland, Kazakhstan, Poland. So they're still texting me, trying to get me into the room, but I'm in the room. I am not actually on Shinoda. Using Adams. Hello. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm usually under uh, Mike Shinoda on some account because that's the one they accidentally put me on. Uh, Adam is from LP Underground Fan Club headquarters, uh, so that's why I, that's got the wrong name up there. Mr. Mike Einziger, how are you? You there? I'm doing very well. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, awesome. I'm good. What's happening? You know, we're at. Uh, I'm at home. Where are you? I know. I see your. I see your your art on the walls back there. I know where you are. <laughs> That's the studio. That's the the creation. This is the studio. Mike has come awesome. over and visited the studio and uh, blessed my guitars. Mm. Um, who who is in the house today? What do we have in here? In oh, where am I? Uh, looking at all these guys in the uh, in the chat in the in the oh, text yeah. chat here. It's a very international uh, chat today. Linkubus, I like that. Yeah. yeah turn off my phone. All right, guys. Wow. That's so, moving very quickly. I know, huh? I'd love to answer some questions. Um, they're they're <laughs> going so fast. I don't know if we'll be able to read anything. <laughs> I have a bunch that were sent to me. What are your What do you have, Mike? I've got. Let's see. Let me let me find them real quick. Um, I saw some on Twitter. Yeah, I'm gonna grab those too. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, I'm just finding one that's good. Um, all right, I've got one. I'm in front of my headphones, so this is a little all right. I don't like to get that we. All right. All right, I've, I've got a question from, can you hear me, Mike? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, yeah, we're all good. I'm just making sure. Okay. Okay, so at Chase May Jr. asks, Incubus, what's your favorite Linkin Park song? And Linkin Park, what's your favorite Incubus song? What a great question. I love that. Yeah. I have, I'm really bad with song titles, um, but there was a there was a, a song that you guys had on your last record. Um, it it had such an awesome beat. Um, I'm trying to think like the lyrics were something like from the like something like from the front the back. You know what I'm talking about, Mike? Oh, uh, yeah, I know which one that is. These guys know what is it? Wretches and Kings. There it is. Wretches and Kings is the uh, is the name. That's a that's a badass song. I, the 
the, how'd you get the drums to sound like that? Those are some huge drum sounds. I remember I was sitting in my car and that thing came on. I was like, damn, Mike Shinoda. <laughs> <laughs> we uh you know i actually i've been building like a you know library of uh sounds ever since i was like 16 and um so yeah those are just like along the way it seems like a lot of people make like 808 drum kits but not all 808 drum kits are created equal you know some people eq them compress them run them onto tape put them back into the computer and um yeah, I think part of that kit, though, might have come from Rick Rubin's uh, 808 uh, machine. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Well, it sounds, it's, sounds I think, great. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at, my, I'm looking at my, um, my iTunes right now. I mean, in my phone, I've got, um, I've got probably Megalomaniac might be one, my favorite one in my phone. Um, but I'm a, I actually, uh, some of you guys know, uh, the guys, some of the guys from Incubus and um, some of the guys from our band grew up, um, kind of grew up in the same area. Oh, my thing looks like it's freezing. Okay. I hear you. I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, so some of my favorite stuff is like uh, some of the older stuff just because you know, whenever you have a um, like a specific memory or watch to certain songs, it's um, it can be special. And um, God, I'm I'm gonna look in iTunes right now and see the name name of the song that I'm thinking of. But Sound, uh, I saw soundtracks of our lives. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. It's funny. Hmm. People, uh, your fans have asked you. I, 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 we, I remember the Fungus Among Us uh, CD cover uh, or CD uh -huh. case used to sit on the cov on the counter in my friend's house. Like, I think it was there like all year <laughs> <laughs> in the ki in his parents' kitchen, like just forever. I, I, I remember that being like a permanent fixture in his kitchen for some reason. I don't know what it was about that. Um, that it was like always sitting around, like getting thrown into the CD player. Uh, um, it's funny. Where was this? Was this in Agora or Thousand Oaks or? Yeah, where were yeah that was where that was, was back. This? That was back. That was back in Agora, and we were probably like I'm. I'm probably thinking like uh, I don't know, like '95 ish. When yeah. did you guys do That's that? Fun. When did you guys do that? Uh, was it a? I guess it's an album. It was. Ten tracks, right? Looking at it right now. The, well, it was, it was all the demos we recorded while we were in high school, and um, so it start we started making those demos like I'd say like around nine, late '93, '94. Um, right. And Fungus Among Us, all that was was just a collection of all the songs that we had recorded, demos that we had made um, up until that point. So in '95, we decided to put them all together on one CD and, you know, call it an album and because we, we weren't, you know, we, we didn't have a record deal or anything at that time, so we did, the best way to do it was to put it out ourselves. And um, so that's what we did and, yeah, Fungus Fungus came out in 1995. Can't believe how long ago that was. That's I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were making, at that time, we were making demo, or I was making, like, rap demos on cassette 4-track. <laughs> mm -hmm. On a task. Yeah, well, actually, it's, it's funny. You know, I don't know if you know the song off of uh, the album Science. There's a song called Magic Medicine. You know it? Do you know it? It's like a little kind of an interlude. Um, between, okay. Yeah. Between, between songs, I recorded that on a on a four track Tascam cassette recorder. Nice. That that one that was one of the. Uh, I used to do all this kind of like drum and bass stuff with that where I would play the drums real slow and with like a real slow tape speed I would speed it up real fast and you get these really cool sound drum tracks that was yeah. that was one of those ones where they play those drum beats and I recorded it with the with the task cam and um, and it just came out cool so yeah pretty funny did you guys um did you guys have um 
Who was the A&R guy at um, Immortal that you guys, did you guys work with, you were on Immortal, right? Yeah, we, we worked with Paul name? Pontius, Happy Walters was, Dude, Happy Walters okay, so, was the, what's that? I have, a, I have a Paul Pontius story. So you guys, uh, Korn, and a couple other artists had his A&R information in the back of the uh, CD, I think. And um, it was like an, you know, Immortal was like, like a little indie label, not little, but they were an indie label, and they had started to have some really good rock music, and in fact, in, in the year or two after, they had some uh, hip-hop stuff, too. Um, I think they're related to, like, Buzz Tone or something, the other, uh, which was their yeah, hip-hop. Yeah, well, that was, uh, that was Happy's, that was Happy's yeah. um, management and hip-hop. So he, he did a lot of hip-hop stuff, like, in the, in the days prior to that. Like, he actually with some people that I knew... Um, before we were ever signed with, and I never even really realized it until later. But he he had signed some friends of mine from high school. Hmm. Well, we we sent a demo. It was like me and my friend, that friend Mark, who had your CD in his kitchen. So Mark and I wrote this little like four song demo, and that was the only four songs that we had. And we um we sent it to that address and addressed it to Paul Pontius. And he cool. called us. He called us like right away, which is really like strange because if what I know now, based on what I know now about A and R and you know how much stuff they probably get and whatever, it was pretty wild that this guy like called us right back. So we met with him like a couple days later. We went into his office. He's like, um, you know, so what's the deal with the band? How many people are in the band? Have you played any shows? And the answer to everything was like, no, we haven't done anything. We aren't anybody. We don't even have a band. It's like me. It's me and Mark recording stuff on a four track. He's like, what studio are you recording in? I'm like, a four track in my bedroom. He's like, you're kidding me. Um, That's awesome, man. He's like, he's like, this isn't done in a studio. He's like, Listen to me. You got to put a band together. You've got to record in a real studio, and like, just keep sending me the stuff. I can't believe you guys, guys don't even basically don't even have a band. So it was that guy Paul Pontius that really like put us on track to like take our thing a little more seriously. It's pretty awesome. That's funny. Does he know that? Um, I've said it before, and I've said his name. I don't. I haven't seen him. I don't even know what he's doing, but. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, he's he around. Can... I'll, I'll connect. I'll connect you with him. He's a good guy. He would probably love to talk to you. That's really funny, man. It is really funny. I bet Mark has seen him because Mark now does. Um, he's in management and stuff, and he's he works with uh, a whole bunch of different bands. Does he work with Bino? Yeah, he works with with Bino at uh, Velvet Hammer. Yeah, I saw I saw him just a few days ago. Yeah, good dudes. Cool. So uh, let's see what else do we have here in the uh, in the. I like that first question from these guys. This that, that was good. That's a good way to start it. I, I kind of answered. It. I said megal megalomaniac. I I think um, if I were to pick something off of the new record, well, I'd maybe we should move on. Here's I've got dig yeah, drive and Me I've got dig drive and megalomaniac in my phone, and I've a ton of your stuff in my iTunes. So I'm not going to go picking through it and pick favorites other than that. You got me beat, man. <laughs> you got me beat. Shri we got Sri your Lanka. Last record, man. Your last nice. record, man. I, I, I love your last record. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mike. I'm excited for everybody to hear the new, the new stuff. It's, it's like, you know, I feel like we keep, you know how it is. Like you want to experiment and try and like just get better at what you do. I'm drinking coffee like I'm, I'm like Ron Bergen now with my mustache. I'm like, <laughs> hello, coffee breath. Morning coffee breath. Gross. Gross. Stay, stay, stay classy. classy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I saw that fly down the screen. It's so funny how people are just saying random things. It says like, Mike, do you like cats? Yeah, yeah I like cats. Marker. Mike, are you Russian? Do you have Russian roots? <laughs> I do have Russian roots. I'm a Russian Jew, which means I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Will you marry me? Sorry, I'm, I'm engaged. I'm taken. 
What else? What do we got? It says Mike. Say hello, Ecuador. Hello, Ecuador. We love you in Ecuador. We're sorry we haven't been there yet, but maybe we'll come there together. Shinoda, want to want to go do a tour in South America? I'll do it. All right, let's I'm in. do it. Argentina. Brazil. Mm. Oh, now they're all shouting out the countries. Look at this. Look yeah, how crazy that is. Mexico. Oh, Mas yeah. We Colombia. We saw Macedonia a minute ago. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Korea. Where, where's China at? Awesome. China, stand up. Where are you? What's that? <laughs> China. China, are you are the Chinese presenting today? Any chat? Yeah, there's China. Oh wait, they're from the UK. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at um I'm looking at the uh, at Twitter right now. Halo. I, I heard you guys are good. Yeah. You, Mike, are you guys pretty good at Halo? We're we're good at Halo. We are. Yeah, we're good. But we haven't played in like a long time though, so I don't know. I don't know how. Are you? Do you guys play? Exactly. Same here. We used to play. Um, and uh, like it's been a you while. know, it's like uh, it, yeah. But where you guys got questions? Are we it, like? Are we? Are we gonna? Are, are we going to play new material off the new album? Somebody's saying at that time, actually, when we when we hit the road with Incubus, um, the record will be out. So I imagine we're going to play um, a good a good chunk of new material um, on that tour. Um, on the tour before that, we'll probably only play a couple, maybe one or two songs. Um, so yeah, so the U.S. tour will be a good chance to see some new stuff. And of course, like we always play. The uh, the old, other albums too, singles and stuff usually. Who are you going for in the NBA finals? Well, <laughs> I gotta say I'm just you know, and you know we're LA, so we're Lakers all the way. But you know we win so much that it's kind of like, almost feel bad, you know, almost feel kind That's of bad. The Clippers are kind of doing well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say my I have a friend who's like a big Clippers fan, and it's this is like his big year, you know. And uh, he's trying to get all talk all tough about the Clippers and the Lakers, and I'm like, dude, the last thing you want is a Clippers Lakers showdown at any point. Like you want the Clippers to play every team except for the Lakers, because if they play the Lakers, they'll have that that cloud of of uh, I don't know. The, the history over top of them, you know, they they they're used to losing to the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. Do it. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that that'll that's what the main thing they're going to be playing against. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kobe likes our music, so I gotta I gotta support. I, I'm sure Kobe <laughs> needs our support big time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's funny. Awesome. Slovenia, what's up? Poland, what's up? Hungary, Thailand, Arizona, Portugal, Spain, Chile, Switzerland, Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> I like people. I like the people who are shouting great. out like a uh, state. Yeah, people are like Russia. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota. I keep seeing about Fort El Paso, Minor. Texas. People want to know about Fort. People want to know about Fort Minor, Mike. Oh, people um, are asking about Fort Minor. You Fort Fort Minor is um, it's not Fort it's Fort Minor is not like is not like dead. I just um, you know, I'm trying to focus on Lincoln Park stuff right now and um. Fort Minor elements in the, in the LP stuff. Like that's like the Wretches and Kings. That song is like almost more of a Fort Minor song to me, but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I agree, we, by the way. there's stuff in there's stuff in there that on the new record that like 
you know, has a little bit of that hip. I feel like the next record too has wrapping on it. So if if the Fort Minor thing is your is your thing, then maybe you'll enjoy it. I just saw a question go by. It said, "How is your relationship with the guys from LP?" I was just maybe like, they're talking. Man, maybe they're awesome. talking to you. Maybe they're talking about. No, I think they were talking about me. Yeah. And I'd say. Good man, it's all love. It's all just love. He's like the zen. He's like the zen guy in the band. He's just always like, he's just always cool. Like everyone else could be freaking out, he'll just be cool. How? What was it like meeting that guy? Because I know, like you know, band lineup changes. This was years and years ago, but you know, lineup changes are always can be really interesting or can be so. What was that whole thing like? was like was just like a like a like a blessing <laughs> it was just awesome he uh he is just real mellow really really good at at uh at what he does you know he's just uh super super easy to work with like just a just really skilled you know really skilled um really really strong sense of rhythm I guess if you're, you know, if you're, especially like when you have to be dropping samples really in time, like, you know, if you don't have good rhythm, that's going to be a real, real tough situation. And it was a, t a tough situation for us up until that point. And, and he, uh, he really just filled the, you know, filled the spot up. And, and, you know, ever since uh, he joined the band, his musicality has just developed and he started learning how to play keyboards and, he got really into like all the sort of old analog synthesizers, um, and uh, I think he's uh, like he's just developed as a musician like tremendously over the last few years. It's been really fun because um, I didn't think that that's really what direction things would go in, but but they did, and it and it's it's just been good. You know, he's like a real he's a legit keyboard player now. Like I can shout out a chord progression at him; he'll play it backwards, forwards. In any you know different sort of configuration, he understands how music works, so it's it's good. He's much more than just like a like a like a turntablist, but he can do definitely. that. Yeah, definitely. I love his. Uh, I saw he's on Instagram. Are you, you're on Instagram too, right? I'm not actually. I need to get on it. I'm gonna get on it just because you asked me to. I need to get on it. <laughs> Go on. Do me a favor. Get on. Um. Get on Viddy. Because that's um, I'm gonna do more stuff on Viddy. I mean, I love Instagram too. He the reason I brought that up is because Kilmore has a couple. He's he he takes his uh his photos on Instagram pretty seriously. I think it's like he's got some good stuff. He's really into it. We were playing golf the other day, and we were in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and uh, and he started taking these pictures of like the desert and of all these cacti all over the place. And they they looked crazy. He had these he has these lenses, you know, like those you, you have those right. too, don't you? I think I saw you with those the other day. Right. Those lenses. Yeah. <laughs> I've got something I've got something similar, but it's like a different his thing is cool. It's like a, a little lens pack that like attaches to the side of the 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 phone case. I don't know. It looks I mean the photos he takes are cool. I like that on Instagram. I wanna yeah. uh, you guys should get on Viddy too because there are little short videos. Yeah. Um it's like yeah, video. We've used We've used Viddy for a lot of stuff, actually. Um, you guys, yeah, I, you guys were started on it about when we did. You did. The band has an account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a lot of it um, when our record came out. Um, but I'm sure we'll be doing a lot more of it, like when we start the tour. Like we'll be. I'm sure it'll be a, a ridiculous like Viddy, Instagram, Twitter fit. Like everybody in my band is like always trying to out each other. They're all like all the guys are always trying to like, you know. Say something that's it'll just like either make everybody uncomfortable or, or piss everybody off or something, and it's really fun. Especially though, we used to have before it was online. You know, we used to have these like uh, Photoshop wars. We would take pictures of each other, and mostly it was mostly like Kill and Ben and Brandon. Well, no, Jose, sorry, all them. 
everybody except for me because I didn't really get into it too much. But they would take photos of each other and just put each other in real compromising situations with Photoshop <laughs> in really amazing ways. And I have a feeling that's like kind of going to transfer real well into Instagram. For sure. We, um, our version of that, we don't actually have to uh, Photoshop much because we can just compromise in positions without any Photoshop. <laughs> Joe, in particular, yeah. um, Joe, Joe oh, Han yeah. is like, he's like a narcoleptic or something and just constantly <laughs> falls asleep during like the most, he falls asleep during everything. And like, he literally would fall asleep at like nearly every. Every Monday we'd have a get together to talk about the record and like you know see how progress was going and he would fall asleep during those sessions every single week and our our engineer Ethan has literally I don't think Joe even knows this he literally has like one picture per week for like over a year of whenever we were in the studio of Joe asleep on the couch or in a chair or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> all, that's good. Collection. Yeah, you gotta make a coffee table book out of it. Oh, they're gonna be if they're not like uh, tour laminates at some point, I'll be surprised. That needs like a coffee table book, like a big, big hard cover <laughs> bat, like big leather book of like all the pictures of him asleep. Be great. That's amazing. All right, what else? So what else we got? I'm trying to, it's, it's the screen. It moves so fast. Somebody just asked me to come to Israel to eat hummus. <laughs> I love hummus. I love hummus. It's so good. <laughs> Somebody just asked if you're going to have an art show soon. Uh, no art shows soon. I, I, with the record, it's, 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 I think we're putting a lot. I'm putting pretty much all my attention into the, the Lincoln Park Living's record and... Uh, the living, I mean, the record comes out in a month, so we we work, we're going to be working pretty hard to get it off the ground. Um, Somebody video, like wrote, we're looking at the video right now. The video's uh, getting closer. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody just wrote, Mike, you are so sexy, and I was wondering if they were talking about you or if they're talking about me. <laughs> we you haven't. Never know. We, ha we haven't had to do uh, a. Um, a lot of it stuff just, like we just saw it again. It just <laughs> oh, it says Mike is so sexy. They keep writing it. He couldn't be talking about me though. Really <laughs> oh, okay. now it's moving. Right. Like you said that, and now it's moving like twice as twice as fast. It said Shinoda. It said Shinoda is so sexy. They're talking <laughs> about you. They're not. Talking that's funny. Let's cool. see here. It's all good. It's all good. It's okay. Somebody fine. Asked. Fine. Fine. Dude, look at this. You're you're gonna piss Mike off, man. You guys be nice. <laughs> hey, do you guys I have, have this tour to happen? There's some questions on um on Twitter about let's see. Oh. Crap, I just lost it. Some oh. people are asking about... Oh, sorry, go on, go on, go on. I have ADD, said keep going. Some, do, we wanna, <laughs> do, do we want to take the tour to other countries? And uh, that'd be fun. I mean, we'd have to see. I don't know. The world. If, we, if we... The problem is if you guys uh, piss Mike off, but, uh, you know, if you keep pushing him, we might. you guys might ruin your chances. Yeah, if you don't if you don't say that I'm sexy, then there is no tour. No how, yeah, it's no actually, way. It's actually in the contract for the tour that we have to regularly tell each of the guys in Incubus that they are sexy. Indeed. <laughs> all right, all right. Like somebody was asking me about what Rennie's doing in the background because he's sitting there. I could see yeah, him in the rear view. Why is he lurking back there? What's going on? It's just, it's, he's, He's kind of a lurker. He's just back there. What's up with <laughs> all those like uh, telescopes? Uh, those are video cameras for I don't know like web operations that they got going on over here. That's serious, yeah. man. Yeah, this is like the this is like the Incubus World headquarters over here. So all kinds of you know stuff happening. 
Telescopes. It'd be cool if they were telescopes, though. <laughs> I have a telescope at my house, and the first time I pulled it out and looked at anything, I saw it's Jupiter, and it, it took my breath away. It was amazing. I saw the spot and the rings and all that. The moons, I could see the... I can see all the moons orbiting Jupiter. Pretty cool. All right, what else? Uh, somebody asked if I know Skrillex. I don't know Skrillex. His That's name a is really Sunny. random random question. Yeah, I don't, I don't is it, know. Is it, I, is it random or is it not random? I mean, people are asking, like, somebody's just like, do you like dubstep? Do you like dubstep? Dubstep is interesting because dubstep is like, you know, it's it's like I remember during like the mid '90s when drum and bass became popular. It was kind of like um, it migrated from from Europe and from England over over here to the U.S. And it was a very specific time. I remember when I first started hearing it, um, it I really got I was really really tripped out by it. And I actually all it became very sort of. Um, in, interesting for me to try and I was always trying to um, drum and bass music with live instruments back then that was how a lot of us was like like that song magic medicine that was on science um, and some of the bonus tracks and stuff on like our EP enjoy incubus before that um, and even some stuff that was on fungus among us and um, for me for example is a, a song where we really kind of were trying to do this like drum and bass thing and um, so when I hear dubstep, it kind of reminds me a bit of when, you know, bass was kind of really becoming popularized. But it's like drum, dr it's like the, the dubstep stuff is is so over the top. Like a lot of it kind of just sounds corny to me. But I will say that like from a from a sound design sort of point of view, like the 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 sonics of some of it are just like incredible. Like Skrillex is like like some of the some of the sounds that he gets and like like the the hugeness of the mixes that he makes are like I mean you can't really like I, I can't knock any of that stuff. It's like it's incredible sounding. Sounds like a film. Which I know Mike, you you know, it's like you know, you're I, I feel like that's a lot very much in your realm, you know, of like sort of the things that you do. It's like you make these big sounding beats that are like you know that would go very well with like a cinematic uh, backdrop, and um, so I'm curious actually to see what you think of like all this dubstep stuff. Actually, yeah, I I like I like it. Um, I don't have um, I wouldn't say that I go deep into it. Um, I mean, I kind of I'm into uh, I like Skrillex stuff, um, Excision, Datsik, um, what else? Uh, a couple friends, like folks that I've kind of run into here and there, like Havoc Indeed did a remix for us, and um, I don't know if you call them dubstep, but they definitely have like their some roots in that um, genre, is like the Glitch Mob and guys like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, you know, I, I, a, so, a story that actually sh I guess I should tell tell these guys is um, at the beginning. Oh, Nero, yeah, I like Nero. Um, I love Nero, actually, too. Nero is at awesome. The at the beginning of this record, at the be when we were writing Living Things, like we were in the first couple months, um, you know, or like ma management and the label, like they're just trying to help out and stuff and make su suggestions that might like make things better or easier or think out the box or whatever. And they said, you know, um, do you would you consider like do you want to do any songs with any of these you know electronic uh, producers or beat makers or DJs or whatever and, and um, you know named off some people and everything and my feeling about that whole thing is this like for for, for like maybe like hips or like you know collaborative like there are certain things that collaboration really I think is everything like some some albums and some artists like it's all about great collaborations when it comes to our band I think the um, hold highest when we're in the studio is really like making our own records on our own first and foremost. After that, like we'll remix stuff and get into the you know studio with other people as like a, a secondary kind of like a second tier kind of thing. But 
I wouldn't want anybody to feel like we were just jumping on the electronic like bandwagon because it's hot. You know what I mean? It's clearly like they're you know the electronic uh, music makers are doing really well right now, and more power to them. Like it's you know I just feel like they should have their own, do their own, you know, make their own magic and all that. And I don't want to be like kind of like trying to play catch up with that because I I didn't I wasn't there on the on the front lines, you know. So to get involved at this point is kind of silly. Other than like, for me, like a remix is dope. We actually, we're, when we put out the, um, if you buy uh, Living Things from LincolnPark.com, you get a, um, it's the only place you'll get a subscription to remixes, like a remix every month. So from now until we run out of remixes, basically, from now until, that's probably like the end of the year, beginning of next year, um, we'll be giving everybody remixes. And uh, yeah, I'd expect like some dubstep. A dubstep remix or two, uh, some electronic stuff, maybe. Will you do? Will you do? They want to have. They want like a metal one. Do you think we could? You and I could do like a straight up like. How metal? Slayer mix. The Slayer. That'd be so awesome. I would love. Can we do? But how would I be involved with a Slayer mix? Like, what am I gonna do? Can I like program the drums? It's like sounds silly. Like, we need to just get a, a like metal like drummer. You ever listen to listen to Atari Teenage Riot? Yeah. They sample. Sampled Slayer. It was awesome. I remember that was around that time, like 94, 95, when drum and bass was becoming yeah. like popular. But they weren't drum and bass really at all. They were like just like electronic punk music uh, yeah, somehow, totally. if that makes sense. Like they, they just they were just raw. I love their music so much. I got to see them play the other night. I actually at Coda. They, were, they oh. were awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they were the only band that I got to see play at Coachella, actually. But uh, oh, how did the uh, yeah, how did the Frank great. Ocean how did the Frank Ocean go? By the way, it was it was really fun. I yeah, I played with Frank Ocean the other night at Coachella, and uh, we had a really good time. It was just really it was like very uh, out of the field and totally unexpected. Uh, um, and uh, I don't know, just a just a, a really good time. I'm not used to playing shows, you know, with with anybody else other than Incubus it was just like completely uh completely different but super super cool and it was the first time I've ever been Cella also I know have you been out to Coachella Mike uh once a, a long time ago yeah I've never been so it was kind of cool to like just see all the tents and but I didn't get to really hang out or anything like that I I I tweeted a couple of uh, getting on the helicopter I flew on a helicopter out there. It was awesome. <laughs> so I had to take off, but you know. Um, so anyway, but yeah, remix. Let's let's do it. Let's let's do it. Let's do some kind of a strange remix. I don't know what it'll be, but death metal. Yeah. Death, not <laughs> death metal. That's what somebody they want. Death metal. I um, love death we, metal. I, I grew up should. listening to some serious death metal. Dude, we should do, we should, we'll just mix a bunch of crazy, crazy crap. We'll see how wild we can get with it. All right, I'm down. Like uh, I said. You said I, heavy metal. They were like I heavy said, metal, not death metal. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, the, we're going to wait until we've got, uh, we're a little bit closer to the uh, album release and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get on it. You guys get back and we get back. Somebody wrote, try the catch up, motherfucker. Yeah, that's from one of our. That's one of our songs. They, I, I said try to catch up, and um, they everybody uh, took that and ran with it. Now they've made like T-shirts that have my face that say "Try the catch up, motherfucker." Nice, it's nice. Very funny. It's a little. Uh, it's a small game in our little our little world. Nice. <laughs> cool. It's unbelievable. How, how many how many people are in this chat? Is there any way of knowing? Yeah, it says 920. Oh, okay, I see. 
That's right. I I can't see. There's a number. It says 920. Now it's 926. Lost somebody. <laughs> nope, they're back. No, now it's 930. They were commenting right. on your uh, on your dog. Somebody actually wrote the the dog is sex. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that. It's Renny's dog. It says I want the dog. <laughs> That's really scary. <laughs> You play Pokemon? No, I don't play Pokemon. I can have oh my a God, dog. It's getting, as a it's getting crazy. Let me look back at it and see if we got anything else. I gotta go soon, you guys. Um, gotta run, but uh, let's see what we got here. Somebody wrote Mike. Somebody wrote Mike. You're a muffin. A muffin. Yeah. Okay. Here's here's one good here's one good question. Um, it says. What's the most hilarious happening you've ever had on your tours? If you tell a funny tour story, I'll tell a funny tour story. Oh, man. Um, you guys want to hear a... Um, I'll let you pick. Do you want to hear the story where... Here's the basic ideas of the stories. Do you want to hear a story, my worst um, drunken incident? Do you want to hear um, what happened with our band and the whole crew at a bar at the hotel? Or do you, do you want to hear about um, what's funny? Um, a mishap on stage. I want to hear about a mishap on stage. A mishap on stage. That's a good one. Um, so, Dry, Mike, I, see a lot of people, I don't know if this has ever happened to any of you guys. I see a lot of we, people so we were drunk. We, they wanted to be drunk. I'll tell those two stories. I'll, I'll tell those two stories. So, this, they're both short, though. So, the, um, we were, you know, we rotate. Um, usually, we'll have a, a few of them that we kind of play around with. We may make changes as we go. And um, so it's, you know, but we stay pretty on top of our changes. And from night to night, you know, if something's new or flipped around, like, we're on top of it. Um, so there was one night where um, we were closing the main part of the set with one step closer. And then we'd leave and we'd come back. We'd leave the stage for a little bit, get a drink of water, and come back for an encore and play a few more songs. Um, so one step closer had been the, the song we'd end, end that part of the set with, like, for a month. And... Um, we, right before that was in the end, a couple songs before that was in the end. So I was out, I'd gone down into the crowd uh, for in the end. I was standing on the barricade with the fans and, you know, grabbing hands and song and whatever, and the song ends. And we were all so, I was just pumped up. I had so much energy. And I'm talking to the crowd and I'm hyping them up, getting them ready for the end, you know, for the next couple songs. Like, you know, may, having them make noise and stuff and like the energy levels going up, up, up. And I look back, and the band is gone. <laughs> They're just fucking gone. I'm sitting out in the crowd, hyping everybody up, make some noise and whatever, and it's time for the encore already. Because <laughs> we switched the set list around, and I forgot. I didn't know that uh, it was going to go in the end, and then we're going to take a break. So I'm sitting out there, hyping everybody up. And it's like, all right, cool, now everybody's hyped, and... Um, Bye. And I just like basically had to like walk off stage like an asshole. And, and my bandmates are sitting back just laughing at me. They're just total. I mean, they were just like dying. They're making fun of me and shit. And um, we just bas I just basically had to pretend it just never happened. Came back out on stage with everybody and played the rest of the set. But it was it was so embarrassing, man. It's got to um, be on YouTube somewhere. I bet it is. Yeah, I bet it is. Um, but the the drunk story is short, and it's really it's, I think it's even even better just because like well so we went to this bar in Japan and it's in like a little alleyway and um, you go inside they have these all these these beers are like this big they're tiny little things and um, they basically uh, they're so small that you can't remember like how many you've had so I had a lot to drink um, hold on a second. I had a lot to drink, and then um, I uh, I passed out. 
So I'm sitting, I'm sitting in this chair on like a, it's like a couch, and I'm sitting there, and I like open my eyes, and I'm like, oh crap, and like I think it was like Dave or Joe was like, hey, you know, we got we're gonna go, like, um, come out front. So I sit up, and I'm looking at the guys, everybody saying goodbye to everybody. We walk out front, and I thought they were all with me, but um, when I got outside, they weren't. And so I'm, like, waiting for them, and I'm still really groggy and drunk, and I was like, shit, you know, um, I'm just going to sit down on the curb. So, like, if this is the, the front entrance of the building, there's, like, the little alleyway like this, and then there's a curb right here. So I basically walk across this little, little one-way uh, one street, and I sit down on the curb, and I'm just waiting, and I'm getting sleepier and, like, like, whatever. And the next thing I know, the owner of the club is, like, hovered over me. He's like, Mike, wake up. What are you doing? You're in the alleyway. And I'm, I'm like, huh? And I'm looking outside, and it's already, it's like the sun's starting to come up. And I'm like, what time is it? He's like, it's like 5 in the morning. I had basically fallen asleep and, like, spent the night sleeping on the ground in the alleyway in Tokyo. And the, and the guys, I, I was like, my first thought was like, what the hell happened with the rest of my guys in my band? Why why did they just leave me out here? Well, <laughs> when, if, if this was if this was the the door of the of the uh, of the bar, and you come out like this, the the cab that was picking us up had pulled up just like that, so they couldn't see me. I was asleep, like they were here, I was asleep here. And they, the cab was in between, and they just got in the cab, and were like, oh, I guess he already took a cab back. Like, and they just bailed on me and left me to sleep in the ground in Tokyo overnight. It's not too, it's not too dissimilar from your, from your live experience. <laughs> they always just like, yeah, they always just throw me under the bus, basically. Yeah, like it's the same thing as them leaving you on stage by yourself, but you were out in the audience hyping the crowd up. Yeah. Oh, they love. Yeah. I think. I guess that's the. Uh, that's that's our dynamic. They just love to leave me hanging. Yeah. Well, I guess now it's my turn to tell a tour story. Sort of in. Uh, I guess in the spirit of. I wasn't. I wasn't drunk, but. Uh, I smashed my guitar and my guitar amps on stage in. Uh, where was that in the Philippines? Yeah. I believe that was in the Philippines. Um, we had a show just not even that long ago. It was probably like six months ago. And uh, wait, maybe some of the people in the chat room know if that was in the Philippines. Where was it that I, hey guys, where was it that I smashed my guitar? Was that in the Philippines? Like that. Let's see what this is. It, it was in Russia, Poland. Oh, somebody said yes, yeah. it was the Philippines. Yeah. So, um, so we came out on stage and it was, you know, it was a big sold out show in this arena. Um, first song, we're playing Megalomaniac, your favorite song, Mike, and uh, it's like right, the sp you know, like right at the spot where the guitar, you know, comes in really heavy, like it's supposed to be really full on and, and um, you know, huge sounding, and we're building up to it and building up to it, building up, and then all of a sudden, no guitar, just gone. First song in... You know, and it, it, it's like in front of like 15,000 people, you feel like you got your balls chopped off, you know, like you're just all naked. And uh, I got really pissed because it was like, you know, so much effort goes into, into you know, coming and playing a show like playing a show like that, you know, like all the traveling and all the just all the all the being tired and everything. You just want to rock so hard at at uh, especially the first song of a, you know into a show like that. And so I just when the guitar shut off, I just got so pissed. I, I, I just first I smashed the guitar. I took the guitar and I put the neck, like the the headstock of the guitar, head first right into the speakers, and I smashed the broke the neck in half. And then after that, I pushed the whole wall of guitar amps just over, like it just I just toppled it. And then I was sitting there in front of like all those people, like kind of going, hmm. Now I don't even have a guitar amp. I have no guitar and I have no amps. Like the whole, whole thing, like where it's on stage where all of that stuff was, is next to bare. There's just like nothing there. There's a bunch of amps like lying on their backs on the ground. And my tech, my poor guitar tech, Grady, he was just looking at me like, 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 
oh god, this look of just pure fear and terror in his eyes. I, I had to I apologize to him. I was like, I'm so sorry. But the funny thing was is that they had the whole thing back up working in like about 30 seconds. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it, but the, the amps were back up. My guitar, I had a guitar on, and it worked, and everything worked, and then the rest of the show was awesome. And it was just one of those really strange... I felt like I was having a dream. I felt like I was in a dream like while it was happening. Very, very <laughs> strange experience. It's on That's YouTube, awesome. too. I get a lot of, like, people People are always, you know, like, talk. people ask me about Philippines. You should teach our guys. I mean, well, maybe not Dave. Dave Phoenix can smash a bass, um, which is actually pretty.